today, folks, we're going to be exploring a uh, thriller case, a case I've been looking forward to for quite some time, uh, quite a long time now. It's a case that takes place in the area that's right outside of British Columbia in Canada, and it's one of Canada uh, and history's most prolific serial killer cases. Uh, this man by the name of Leopold. So this will be a very interesting uh, observation to watch this. This is lesser known um, among the true crime community, so be certain to spread the word, get this out there far and wide. We want a lot more people to be able to know about these specific cases and what's really going on. This will be very interesting, so enjoy. Thank you. So this is the location in uh, Pont. Pont Rouge, near the outskirts of Quebec City, where Leopold Dion essentially stayed at. There's a flat kind of right nearby. You see this enormous bridge. Um, and it's just interesting because <clears throat> this, <clears throat> this particular area was covered in ice and snow almost year-round. It's a very, very large um, bridge area and the river is covered in ice all the time so very very cold place but um, a lot happened here a lot that history remembers so thank you today I have a slightly different format that is being conducted and done here since I'm supposed to share this with you guys I'm running this on a uh, slightly different platform and format and this is a very important case um, to me for a number of reasons. It takes place in Canada and um, essentially takes place near an area we like to call British Columbia. It's a very uh, well-known location in Canada and um, the person involved in this is a infamous serial killer. Someone that a lot of the community needs to know um, much more about and it really deserves further introspection and so I've done this format in a different way than you may be used to um, for you guys because I want you to be able to see me speaking but also see kind of the background as it goes on with this case so the case is in regards to the serial killer named Leopold Dion and he is one of Canada's most notorious killers in um, the area around British Columbia. And uh, it's also quite tragic because it's a true, true story. Everything that went on here that involved much younger children, we're talking about younger boys, younger girls also are victims of this uh, this person, Leopold Dion. So Leopold Dion, the infamous Canadian sex offender and serial killer, abused up to 21 boys, killing four, as well as other victims, within a period of two months in the year 1963. They called him the monster of Pont Rouge. That was the nickname they gave it. He would lure his victims in, posing as a photographer, and was arrested the day after um, when they discovered the last, very last murder he did. On November 17th, in 1973, Dion was stabbed by a fellow inmate named Norman Champagne, who they used to call Lawrence, Lawrence D. Arani, kind of after the Lawrence of Arabia. It was supposed to be a, a gimmick. Um, but anyway, Norman D. Champagne, who at the time was later guilty of other crimes 
and um, was charged under reason of insanity. So, Leopold Dion was a very famous serial killer in the area of British Columbia, Canada. He was sort of like the Jeffrey Dahmer of the Canadian province. And the types of murders that he would be involved with were quite chilling. He would take his victims, whether they were boys or sometimes even girls, and he would stuff them later with just unspeakable things. So he would treat them like he would treat almost stuffed animals. There were allegations that they even did something to their insides that's almost akin to taxidermy. And I've never been able to truly confirm whether those allegations are all correct, but the allegations were made. And they were made also in court numerous times. So Leopold Dion was a truly terrible, terrible, awful serial killer. Really, really quite severe. And we're talking more than 15 to 20 victims in total. And there's some interesting uh, backstory to this as far as the place that he lived and the location where he uh, was coming from is not what you would expect normally to encounter. And um, so this is going to be covered in this session as well. So Leopold Dion committed a lot of these murders in um, the 1960s. His first official assault took place near British Columbia and it was against a young woman from Pont Rouge which is the reason why he got the nickname the monster of Pont Rouge in effect is because of these incidents that were reported here in this town right near British Columbia Dion abused 21 boys of whom he also killed four. He lured his victims by posing as a photographer. His first murder victim was only 12 years old at the time. And he lived in Quebec. His name was Guy Lukanik. When Dion, uh, when Dion lured him out, he did it by taking a series of snapshots with an older camera, but not before claiming he wanted to continue their specific chat elsewhere in a more private location. He drove the boy into the countryside where in a remote open spot Dion strangled Lukernik and buried him in the field. On May 5th, 1963, Dion crossed paths with eight-year-old Aline Carrier and 10-year-old Michael Morell. He used the same ploy to, learn, to lure them directly to his car, driving them to a run-down building in St. Raymond de Pontief. With the lane, he pretended to play prisoner so that he could tie the boy up at the cottage. Once the younger boy had been overcome, Dian turned to the older one 
Michel, whom he led outside, whereupon he asked the child to take all of his clothes off. Dion then strangled him with a garrote before going back inside and smothering the other boy. For those who are not aware, a garrote is a type of a Canadian um, uh, piece of farming equipment. It's used all the time for farmers, but they call it they call it by that name because sometimes they've used it, you know, in household activity. Sometimes they've used it in the kitchen, but often it's just used by farmers to take care of specific things on their farmland. And so that's what was used to kill this boy, which was very, uh, very disturbing. And on May 26, 1963, he met 13-year-old Pierre Marquis, who was also taken to the fake for taken in by the fake photographer's promises. So he would lure all these boys in and some girls and other children with fake promises of being a star, you know, in photography. He was going to make them totally different people. You know, the way that he would lure them in is with deliberate sleight of hand remarks, comments, and just really, really terrible gestures um, that would certainly not fool anyone who's normally actively uh, working on things or involved in something, but it fooled these kids and it lured them in. It deceived them to believe that they were going to be photography, you know, stars, that there was all these amazing things that were going to happen. And of course, none of these things ended up occurring Leopold just lured them in so that they would be able to be easily sold the story and then be able to buy what was going to happen. And it's really tragic. I mean, just the kinds of things that happen are truly horrific beyond any any kind of measure. The death sentence that he got was commuted to life imprisonment by the Governor General of Canada at the time, Georges Venier. So unfortunately, after luring all of these kids in, including Pierre, his sentence was ultimately commuted. Which, when you see the results of what happened and really what he did, what they did, there is no doubt in anyone's mind that that sentence should not have been commuted. He should not have ever been released. He should not have been released. And what happened to these children, you know, that is beyond horrific. This is like the Summer Wells case of Canada, in other words. It's really, really uh, horrifying what happened here. With all of these boys as victims, up to 21 boys, and yes, even some females also, and just children overall in Canada, had to witness this monster do these things. And again, there were allegations, and there's still accusations to this day, that some of these children, after they were uh, murdered and buried, they, you know, his colleagues or Leopold himself attempted to do a type of taxidermy or something to the bodies. And um, for some, you know, those comments were never confirmed. But it's still extremely suspicious because there were things that were next to these bodies, to these corpses when they were laid out in the open field. And it's truly terrible to think after all this time, you know, no one in the investigator's office, no one in the Crown Prosecutor's office to this day truly knows everything that happened here. And some interesting things have come up that have popped up recently in connection to this. And we're also going to look at some of those key aspects as well. So Leopold Dion lived right here 
in this area that's kind of being shown off in the background in um, Quebec City, right near Bellevue Castle. So he lived in one of these kind of upper flats for a while. You can see these flats here are very simple to distinguish and they're extremely small. Like there was really no room um, to live anywhere in particular when you were living inside one of these flats. So that's where Leopold Dion would stay for most of his interesting life. And that, of course, is um, Pont, Pont Rouge or Rouge. Pont Rouge is where he got his nickname from. It's part of Quebec City in Canada, over near the uh, other area such as British Columbia. So it's, it's quite a ways out, and it was right there directly next to the Bellevue Castle area. When you look at it on a on a real map, and so it's not a very large place, but it is extremely dangerous because a judge there, who was kind of rolled into this, um, and I didn't know until really studying this recently, the judge George Street was his name. He kind of naively enabled. Uh, Mr. Leopold Leopold Dion to do some of the things that he did because once again they have a psychiatrist there who's on the board of examiners it's like a um, he's an interesting fellow kind of a a uh, a Greek type Edward Edward Argo or something. He has a very interesting name, and I studied him quite a bit just to be able to start understanding really what was happening here. And he's the one who kind of didn't see any issue with uh, Leopold's behavior. Like he just kind of dismissed it and ignored it overall and said, no, he should be ready immediately for parole and for release according to our board of review. You know, and he was the executive director there at the time, and he's not anymore, thankfully. But he is who roped in George Street to kind of look past these things of what was really going on, and that's the difficulty of this. You know, I can say unofficially, folks, that some of these people, like Mr. Street, are almost an accomplice, like the psychiatrist that looked the other way, and he definitely wasn't a naive man. He's, he, he had a degree, you know, but he looked the other way on this issue, just saying that Leopold Dion is someone with a few problems, and we can just have the parole board go ahead and sign off on this. That's fine. Um, and in a way, he enabled a number of these murders to take place. He truly, most certainly, did, did exactly that. And that's why it's kind of challenging for me to, um, to talk about this case. This case means a lot to me because of all of the children affected. You know, up to 21 or more boys, uh, a few girls, children all over Quebec City who were mercilessly assaulted or uh, just had terrible things done to them by this man, Leopold Dion, who just pretended to be a happy-go-lucky photographer. You know, you can see here uh, Pont Rouge is a very common area. It's where a lot of people travel back and forth who want to visit British Columbia. It's where a lot of people come to congregate to learn about the area and to learn about some of the religious institutions here. And it's a very quiet and calm community. But Leopold Dion, of course, as you know, he was the exact opposite. He was very, 
very brash. I mean, there were times that he was timid, but he would come off with kind of an overbearing personality a little bit. And um, he would seduce his uh, clientele or his, his students, these very, very young children, to come and join his field trips to learn about photography. And after he would do so, he would murder them in cold blood and leave their bodies in this field, just in the open range area. And it's just so horrible, you know, to, to really look at what happened because the system in Quebec City truly did fail. George Street was pulled in by promises and his own naivete, his naiveness, with this other board member who didn't have good intentions and I feel strongly certainly enabled some of the crimes that Mr. Leopold Dion was engaged in. And um, it's, it's a real tragedy because, you know, we don't see this sort of thing happen that often. But um, in the case of this area in Quebec City, near Pont Rouge, it did happen. And, and upwards of 25 children lost their lives as a result of this very tragic and, and sad circumstance. And, you know, that's why I, um, I really love covering these stories for you guys, because I want people to see that there's a wider world out there that we should very much be paying attention to. And we should, we should ask questions about why Leopold Dion was overlooked and why they kind of ignored some of the very, very troubling signs and, and similar things. And we should ask questions about what's happened in Canada. Because folks, you know, what happened in Canada in many of these instances also happened in America, elsewhere, in similar ways with, with different stories, but nonetheless harrowing tales that should be a reminder to each of us that there's still a lot more we should endeavor to learn about our society, even though it can be quite um, nice and uplifting at times. There's a lot of things we need to learn about the inner workings and what goes on behind the scenes. And so I appreciate you coming along with me on this journey today. You can see that the area of Quebec City is a very quiet and really stable town. It's a nice place, but it does have its dark, dark sides. And if we could endeavor to learn more about people like Leopold Dion, just think of all of the children that we will ultimately save in the process. So thank you. Please go ahead and spread the word and get this case out in front of many more eyes. I see it doesn't have as much attention as it could. And it's very good to be able to learn about these things because these are instances where... Um, just as much as new people are going to learn, we ourselves are going to learn a lot more as well. I appreciate it. And if you'd like to look up the case, go ahead and follow along with the notes. He murdered up to 21 boys who were also, also uh, abused by, uh, by him while he was being a photographer. Leopold Dion. Very famous case. Thank you again. Stay tuned for more true crime.